Oh, welcome back to Ecocentric. I've been cleaning up my house. Of course, being a bachelor and a gardener, everything was a very F4 tornado went through this place. At any rate, I do have four cords of wood packed in the basement. And you see this? I'm going to be uh, making a door. And I'll record it, I'll see if I'm going to do a video of it, but the door that's here, it's holding back no heat whatsoever. And so I put foam up there, and that's holding back quite a bit of heat. But even at that, with the cold outside, you see uh, the plastic I got put over is puffed out? And if it was windy, that would be really puffed out. That will cut back on my need for firewood greatly. And all my paints and that uh, put there on the shelf. Oh, yeah, down here. I did mention um, about doing the trees and having a bunch of potted seedlings and even older trees ready to go when I've proven the plants that I'm trying to bring in as a new food crop. There are some trees that I have to cut down. This is some rounds from that, large rounds, that you could use to make coffee tables and the like. I have three trees out there I need to take down. I looked at them and I'm like, I'm not even going to try to split that. Right full of limbs so the trunk itself will be right full of knots. But I measured one of them this morning and it's uh, 27 inches across at the base and four feet up it's 19 inches across what I'm doing here is collecting any rounds or on some trees I might make a live edge slab and letting it dry out and whether once it's dry whether I'll use it or sell the round as is uh, well that we'll see that won't be on to next year I guess because it's going to take a while for that to actually dry. This is my potting table workbench. It's a little thinner but it is perfectly flat both ways. So if I'm doing anything that I need to have things level as I'm building them, it goes on that bench. This one is not level. The nice thing about this one, of course, is that I've got a smooth top. This is a uh, birch plywood put across the top of the these uh, two by stock to make a nice smooth surface. I got a part coming for that starter. It's been on the way for 18 days now. Now, this will be the last of the salt that I'm harvesting this year because the bays uh, froze over. And I made a little frame. That screen is metal. So it's not going to melt. And I put legs on it because I want to use this as a dehydrator thing. Right now, you see it's 151 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got the uh, probe right there and I have to try to run the basement at about 23 degrees so I'm going to see what I need the temperature over there to keep here saying 23 degrees last night the uh, sunroom got down to 2.5 degrees my seed starter shells are all clear I don't have any lights down on the bottom if you remember last year I had an animal get in and everything down low it was getting at so I had to move stuff up high and uh, I'm collecting these lights to make a flat um, grow light surface. I 
I have a three up there, a three there. So I'm going to keep collecting and put three down here now because I've got my animal situation uh, rectified. There's no more animals in the basement. The holes are all plugged. Over here, I recently removed the plants, but I'm going to add big plants here. And these, some of these up high will probably probably um, move over to where I'm going to add the big plants. Because I have another shelf that's supposed to go right here. But I think I'm going to put it halfway between this shelf and the ceiling to have even spacing. This tiny Tim is two years old. And it's producing well. I'm going to change the pail though because it was drying out and even though I had water in the ends there so it should have gotten water off the wicking mat it didn't so I'm going to change it to a different pot. This one is doing fine. It was dormant all summer because it's really cool down here but uh, when I started doing the fire it started uh, flowering. I don't think I have one that's pollinated yet to, and growing a pepper but we'll see. Now this guy back here See, that's ginger. And uh, during the growing season, I wasn't I didn't have the fire in over there. This thing died and that's what this is, see? That's the whole uh, plant that was growing up. And it just died right back to the ground. I just left it there because I wasn't doing much down here. And when I put the fire in and got it warmed up here, lo and behold, it grew again. So we'll see what that does now over the uh, winter. I'm starting earlier than I started it last year. And uh, we'll see, we might get a good plant. Rosemary comes and goes. The main reason being that uh, I forget to water, <laughs> put water in there sometimes and that one dries out too. I add um, three tiny tin down here. Two of them died because the end lights, the three end lights gave out. And I got new ones put in there now. But those three bulbs back there, they uh, gave out and the plants beneath them died. The plant that I had in there well, woe is me, I forgot to water it. It was three years old, a tiny Tim, and producing every, well, fairly well actually, and every now and then I was sitting at my computer, I could reach over and get a, fri a fresh uh, ripe tomato. And I forgot to water it and it died, so my three year old uh, tiny Tim is no more. He didn't grow in that one. This is a uh, cherry, two cherry trees that I started from the pits off of the uh, cherries that I'm growing out in the garden, the uh, big tree. And then I have some other herbs just started there. But in back here, you remember the onion seeds that were already sprouted? So the greater percentage of, the, of them are growing and then that with the purple on the bottom they're much bigger that was those little bulbs that I had planted these what I'm thinking actually is to get them up a little ways and as you know um, growing from seed it will be very variable um, so what I want to do is let them grow a little ways and take a cutting off of the big cherry tree out in the garden and graft it into the rootstock. 
that's part of what I'm going to use to uh, build my door for my basement. It's pressure treated stuff, but hey, I got it for free. And my heart desk, if I was going to sit down and do any drawing, is once again open and I can sit there and do artwork. And I almost forgot to mention, you see those little kale there? Well, they were growing up almost touching the top and I cut them down now let's see I'm gonna move you in a little bit okay so I cut that one off there And now I have two shoots coming up. This one is cut off here. And I have one, two, three shoots coming up. And they will grow up just as big as the other one, right to the uh, top, and then I'll cut it down again and let it grow up again. Eventually, of course, I'm going to have to be cutting off some of the side pieces because, well, I'm only going to be able to let them get so bushy, eh? One of the things about growing them this way is normally you got the light coming down on them and when you get the big leaves uh, they shade the other leaves below and this is what happens they'll drop the leaves so when you're harvesting you take the lower leaves and you end up with this big bare stalk with uh, a few leaves right on top of it On the other hand, when you put them in a place where the light can get all around them, that doesn't seem to happen as much. You see, there's quite a lot of leaves on there. Now, I harvested some, and I do, like you normally would with this type of kale, take the bottom leaves. But uh, they don't die off and drop quite the same as if you're growing them in a grow with a grow light over the top. This is the pepper that I dug up from the garden. It's just gone dormant now and it'll just drop all its leaves. Huh. I'm busy at other things so I didn't get around to doing anything with these. I take them and uh, chop up when I'm using an onion. I chop up the green and then I chop up the uh, onion and use it all, just as long. They're, they go a little soft, but they still seem to be just as good. I'm leaving these just like that this year. This is chocolate pepper, so I mean I have other seeds. What I want to do is see just what can they withstand. If they survive this winter, they'll, they'll drop all their leaves. I had a little pepper going, growing right there. They'll just drop all their leaves and this will be a few sticks. It might also be the case that this new growth up here might die if that be the case I should be able to 
cut it back and let these buds that are down low they will grow out same thing with this one over here I have some new growth up top and that will be weaker than the old growth down here and so if it does the new growth does completely die then I'll just cut it back and see if I can get the sprouts come out down low I had peppers growing on them you see but the temperature's gone too low now they're not going to come to anything it's one of my little bonsai peppers rosemary's doing nice hopefully the backlight doesn't wreck that and you can actually see I'll have to swing around being in here I don't think that will uh, die I think it'll do just good the only issue of course it is growing toward the light uh, when I harvest from it I will uh, just trim off back by the uh, window there and we'll see how things turn out I had some spiders in here over the uh, summer and there wasn't a bug flying bug to be seen the leaves on this one are a little more susceptible to being attacked by the uh, white fly and aphids but I did take my sprayer and just sprayed them back and a little tiny one there now the aphids um, pollinated that this is the Shintaka ghost pepper from uh, John I will it grow I have an extremely difficult time actually I don't think I've uh, succeeded in pollinating one flower from this one because it's little tiny flowers the peppers with the bigger flowers I can get to pollinate and so you see this one now one of the first ones I showed you is a hot pepper and I have two hot pepper plants here and over the summer I got uh, more than enough peppers to do uh, I done hot and spicy green tomato pickles and the hot and spicy uh, green tomato salsa and I had enough peppers to use in both uh, batches this one is another one with tiny flowers so I didn't get anything out of this but um, they're in pails so next summer I am going to move them out to the um, deck out back and let uh, nature do her thing to pollinate the plants back to this one of course he's in this big planter so I can't move him so the plan is to get two of these growing in uh, pots as well and then I can do the same move them out move them back in I only got so many room to in here for peppers for perennials and growing them back and forth <laughs> so I had these sitting there the entire summer and uh, no sir they didn't do a thing I, when I was cleaning up the garden I brought them in and I just put them there in the porch and they were left there for a few days and they all sprouted I said fine I'll put you out in the sunroom then this one I already got seeds from, but it re-sprouted too. So, I mean, the onions don't want to die this year. Let's see if I can get you back far enough to see this. It is actually quite alive. This temperature is staying down down here. You see? It's the golden nugget. Now this is a small one. They get to be twice this diameter. But if I 
scan over this this thing is right full of flowers at the temperatures now I don't think those flowers are going to come to anything but it is right full of flowers so if this survives the winter it's going to produce a awful lot of tomatoes next year so remember that's golden nugget this one let's see if I can uh, find the tag it's a wispy little thing the leaves have lightened up in the cold temperatures but it doesn't look like it's Okay, I'm going to flop over and die now. It's uh, doing okay. And this is the normal size of tomato that you would get from it. So that one's still, the jury's open on exactly what you would do with it. It looks like, well, you see the frame on this one. If I had a frame like that on that one, I think it would uh, be good enough. This one, I think would make a beautiful uh, patio plant. Uh, I have some of those uh, larger tomato cages. And so if I start another one and put a tomato cage around them, you'd have some of their arms would come out and drape down over the bucket and cover the bucket and then another bunch of arms will come out from the first ring on the tomato cage and another bunch from the top ring and uh, you'd have just this big bunch of greenery sitting down there dotted with uh, little gold colored orbs it would make a beautiful plant for the uh, patio These two, they were further back and they were given the same treatment as the other tomato plants, but they were dying. So I said, it must be the amount of light. And I moved them down here. That one didn't uh, revive, but this one was starting to. It just didn't add enough uh, strength because the temperatures dropped soon afterwards that uh, it didn't have enough strength to actually get going before the temperatures dropped. But you see this one. Now this is the yellow pear. And down low where it can get lots of light still. It's still doing okay. In here, it's in behind. And it uh, has got some dead pieces on it. But as you go up, and there's less and less light, so you got rid on up till the top part died altogether. And so a combination of low temperatures and lack of light, then it just died up there, still being alive down low where it can get light. So the golden glow, yeah, I just showed you. I think it's going to make a beautiful patio plant. The initial thought was that because it was a bush, it might be another variety that you can use as a house plant like Tiny Tim. If Tiny Tim was in a pot like this, it would restrict its size according to the size of pot that it's in. Golden uh, Nugget wouldn't do any such thing. They're completely root bound and they want them to continue growing and growing. So I moved them from the grow room and I put them up here. And I give them some water every now and then, keeping them alive. But when the temperatures dropped, and it was so difficult to keep them alive because, like I said, they're told completely root bound. I said, ah, forget it. So they are, uh, we found out that they're no good for your indoor plant 
It's something that you would have to have if it can be overwintered. You've got to put it in at least a five gallon bucket. And you've got to have a room to put them in. Tomatoes, unlike peppers, you're going to have to uh, give them light throughout the winter. They uh, won't use very much water. Um, and as long as they don't freeze, they won't die. So keep the soil moist um, and the temperature above freezing. And a lot of tomato plants you can keep over the winter but like I said you need a big enough place to put them if it's going to be one of those bigger uh, tomato plants now that I've lost my three-year-old tomato tiny tin this has become my pride and joy I'm going to have to uh, brace up that branch there because I have a bunch of tomatoes here and it seems to have been too heavy for the branch but I've got a little mini tree made and I said that's my tomato tree <laughs> and the stock down here see it gets really hard and uh, as you hold them up and after a while they'll be like strong enough to hold themselves I don't know well like an apple tree of course if it's got too much fruit on it then the limb will break so that'll be the same idea as what's happened there but uh, yeah that's my pride and joy with the respect to Tiny Tim's now still struggling along and I like the form of this uh, pepper plant the way the branches go sometimes I uh, get it to uh, start growing well and other times I don't I did get uh, three or four peppers off this plant over the summer so eventually I will learn and figure that out I got a ring of fire here and that's a nice looking plant, the way the branches are formed, I mean. So uh, I might get that one growing. Wonderful plants for the uh, indoor house plants. The thing that is different from this, like the regular house plant, you stick them in a pot, you water them, and <laughs> a lot of times that's all you do to them. With uh, these and a tiny tin same thing you will always get little pieces that are dying and you'll have to go by and pick off the dead leaves and it basically you'd have to get up close and personal with your plants and go over them every so often and from a gardener's point of view uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that right that ate over there a plant that is growing fast. It was only the one plant when I bought it a month ago and it was just half as tall as that but uh, it's growing like crazy. I think this is something else that uh, gets root bound or something because what happens there with these there's little bulbules underneath and uh, they die on a regular basis, but the, but they produced new bulbules before they die, and that's what these green pieces are coming up out of. And I do have a nice looking lavender. Once again, uh, the dead pieces, because this is not a house plant technically, and so you have to be up close and personal to keep them looking pristine the other thing was interesting no this is not a pumpkin that's my Ronda Nice zucchini the two biggest Ronda Nice that I harvested and I never used them I had them sitting there on the bench and over time this one now has gone almost completely yellow and uh, that one still got quite a bit of green on them but they're ripening up
So that's how she looks right now. Hope you enjoyed the little uh, peek of what we have to work with this winter. And uh, if you did, make sure you hit that uh, like button. If you want to follow along, of course, make sure you're subscribed. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.